The abandoned alien captive howled in misery, alone and helpless in his tiny cold cell, not knowing his only hope was the human soldier coming to rescue him. In the Galactic Council Chambers, a tense scene unfolded as Philip Morris, grizzled human veteran of the bloody Lemnorian conflict, stood surrounded by a sea of hostile alien representatives. The tall, slender council leader with translucent skin addressed him. Commander Morris, we have an urgent mission. Sirius, a Lemnorian defector, is stranded on Zorgax, a hostile planet deep in Lemnorian space. He claims to have critical intel to prevent a devastating war. Extract him and bring him here safely. The chamber erupted. Alien counselors shouted in protest. Working with a Lemnorian traitor violates our treaties. Humans are too violent and unpredictable to be trusted. Philip stayed stoic, unfazed. The leader raised a hand, silencing the room. It's decided. Commander Morris, you have 72 hours. The galaxy's fate rests on you. Philip nodded curtly, accepting. As he turned to go, the leader added, If you're captured, we'll disavow all knowledge of your actions. Philip smirked, a glint of determination in his battle-scarred eye. Got it. I'll get it done with or without your help. He strode out, knowing if he failed, humans would lose their only chance to gain a powerful ally and prevent a war that would end billions of lives, including those of everyone he loved. Philip's boots thudded on the metal grating as he strode up the Maverick's ramp, his mind still reeling from the Council's dire warning. Grok, his reptilian first mate, was waiting for him in the cargo bay, his scaly arms crossed over his broad chest. "'What's the word, boss?' Grok asked, his yellow eyes gleaming with curiosity. Grok's forked tongue flicked out, tasting the air. "'Zorgax, that place is locked down tighter than a Klaxian's wallet. The Lemnorians don't mess around when it comes to security.' Philip nodded, his jaw set with determination. "'Exactly why they need us, buddy.' We're the only ones crazy enough to take this on. As the Maverick lifted off, its cloaking device shimmered to life, rendering the ship invisible to all but the most advanced scanners. Philip and Grok huddled over the hollow table, studying the meager intel the Council had provided. Looks like our boy Sirius was last seen in the Zorgax Undercity, Philip mused, zooming in on a seedy-looking district. Even the Lemnorians don't like to patrol down there, it's a hive of scum and villainy. Grok chuckled a deep rumble in his throat. Sounds like your kind of place, boss. Philip smirked, but his eyes were serious. We'll need to blend in, Grok. Can't go in guns blazing, not this time. Grok's claws tapped on the table as he considered. I might know a guy on Zorgax who can help with that. Owes me a favor from way back. He can set us up with some local threads. Maybe point us in the right direction. Philip clapped his friend on the shoulder, his grip firm. Make it happen, Grok, we're going to need every advantage we can get. As the Maverick hurtled through hyperspace, the two warriors prepared for the mission ahead. Philip checked and rechecked his weapons, while Grok meditated in his quarters, his mind reaching out to the ancestors for guidance. They both knew the stakes. If they failed, not only would Sirius be lost, but the fragile peace the Council had worked so hard to maintain would shatter. War would engulf the galaxy, billions would die, and the human race would be forever branded as the ones who let it happen. But Philip Morris had never been one to back down from a challenge. He'd faced worse odds before and come out on top. This time would be no different. He glanced at the chrono on the wall, watching the seconds tick down. Seventy-two hours. The clock was ticking, the Maverick shimmered into view, dropping out of hyperspace at the edge of the Zorgax system. Philip cut the engines, letting the ship drift as he and Grok made their way to the cramped shuttle bay. They were already dressed for the mission, clad in the ratty, patchwork clothing favoured by Zorgax's poorer residents. I feel like I'm wearing a dead banter, Grok grumbled, picking at his ill-fitting tunic. Philip smirked as he ran through the pre-flight checks on their battered shuttle, Better get used to it, buddy. We're about to become part of the local color. As they approached Zorgax's atmosphere, Philip frowned at the sensor readings. The space around the planet was buzzing with activity, far more than their intel had suggested. 
Looks like the Lemnorians have stepped up their game, he muttered, his fingers dancing across the controls as he wove the shuttle through the traffic. Security's tighter than a hut's coin purse. Grok leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. Why the sudden crackdown? You think they know about Sirius? Philip shrugged, his focus never wavering from the task at hand. Doesn't matter, we stick to the plan. Get in, get Sirius, get out. The shuttle shuddered as it entered the atmosphere, the hull groaning under the strain. Philip guided them towards a run-down spaceport on the city's outskirts, setting down among the other decrepit ships with a jarring thud. As they stepped out into the humid, foul-smelling air, a hooded figure detached itself from the shadows and approached them. Philip tensed, his hand drifting towards his concealed blaster, but Grok stepped forward with a grin. Zack, you old scoundrel!' he exclaimed, clasping forearms with the weathered human. "'I knew you'd come through for us.' Zack lowered his hood, revealing a face etched with hard living and old scars. "'Anything for you, Grok.' but you boys have picked a hell of a time to come to Zorgax. He led them into the twisting, garbage-strewn alleys of the city, keeping to the shadows and avoiding the main streets. Philip could hear the tramp of Lemnorian boots in the distance, the sound setting his teeth on edge. Your Lemnorian defector has kicked over a hornet's nest, Zack explained as they hurried along. Bounty hunters, Lemnorian spec ops, even the crime syndicates, they're all gunning for him. Philip and Grok exchanged a grim look. This mission had just gotten a whole lot more complicated, but Philip set his shoulders, his eyes glinting with that old, familiar determination. They'd come this far. They'd find Sirius and get him out no matter what it took. The fate of the galaxy was riding on their shoulders, and Philip Morris had never been one to shy away from a challenge. Zack led them deeper into the city's underbelly, the streets growing narrower and more labyrinthine with every turn, the stench of poverty and desperation hung heavy in the air, mingling with the acrid tang of industrial waste. Philip's senses were on high alert, his hand never straying far from his blaster. How much farther? Grok growled, his eyes darting from shadow to shadow. I feel like we're being watched. Zack held up a hand, silencing them. We're here, he whispered, nodding towards a nondescript door set into the wall of a crumbling tenement. Last known location of your Lemnorian friend. Philip stepped forward, his heart pounding in his ears. This was it, the moment of truth. He reached for the door, his fingers closing around the rusted handle, but before he could turn it, a blaster bolt sizzled past his ear, missing him by inches. Blaster bolts seared the air around Philip and Grok as they dove for cover behind a stack of rusted crates. Lemnorian soldiers poured into the alley, their weapons spitting deadly energy. Zack, crouching behind a dumpster, shook his head vehemently. I didn't know, I swear, someone must have tipped them off. Philip gritted his teeth, his mind racing. They were pinned down, outnumbered and outgunned, but he'd be damned if he'd let a little thing like impossible odds stop him. With a grunt, Philip hurled the grenade over the crates. A blinding flash and deafening bang filled the alley, stunning the Lemnorians. Philip and Grok seized the moment, vaulting over their cover and charging forward, blasters blazing. They fought their way through the disoriented soldiers, their weapons flashing in the dim light. Philip moved like a man possessed, his every shot finding its mark. Grok was a whirlwind of claws and scales, his strength and ferocity more than a match for the Lemnorians' superior numbers. Finally they burst out of the alley, and into the neon-lit streets of the city's seedy underbelly. Zack, panting and wide-eyed, pointed a shaking finger down the street. The bar, he gasped. Hurry before more of them show up. Philip and Grok didn't need to be told twice. They sprinted through the crowded streets, shoving past startled pedestrians and leaping over piles of garbage. The bar loomed ahead, a grimy, pulsing den of iniquity. They burst through the doors, blasters at the ready, the patrons, a motley assortment of aliens and humans, froze in mid-drink, their eyes wide with fear and surprise. He led them into a back room, dimly lit and hazy with smoke. A group of rough-looking individuals were gathered around a table, arguing heatedly. They fell silent as Philip and Grok entered, their eyes hard and calculating. Quiet! the bartender roared, his voice shaking the walls. 
These two are looking for the Lemnorian defector. They're willing to pay top credits for information. A sleek, feline alien leaned forward, her cybernetic eye glinting in the low light. I might know something, she purred, her tail twitching. But it'll cost you. Philip tossed a pouch of credits onto the table, the coins clinking softly. Start talking. The feline grinned, her metallic teeth flashing. Your Lemnorian was here looking for a way off planet, but he got pinched by a bounty hunter named Zog, a real nasty piece of work. Word is Zog's planning to sell him to the highest bidder. Grok slammed his fist on the table, making the others jump. Where can we find this Zog? he growled, his yellow eyes blazing. Philip and Grok exchanged a look, their faces grim. They had their lead, but time was running out. If they didn't act fast, Sirius would be lost, and with him, any hope of preventing a galactic war. Without another word, they turned and strode out of the bar, their minds already racing ahead to the next phase of their mission. The warehouse. Zog. Sirius. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and Philip Morris was not about to let it slip through his fingers. Philip's boots pounded the pavement as he and Grok raced through the narrow, winding streets of Zorgax's capital. The stench of garbage and desperation assaulted their nostrils, but they pushed on, driven by the urgency of their mission. As they neared the warehouse district, Philip pulled Grok into an abandoned building, out of sight of the increased Lemnorian patrols. Bounty hunters stalked the streets, their weapons gleaming in the dim light. Grok peered through a shattered window, his reptilian eyes scanning the perimeter. Boss, this place is locked down tighter than a miser's purse. We can't just go in guns blazing. Philip nodded, a sly grin spreading across his battle-scarred face. We need a distraction, and I've got just the thing. He reached into his pack and pulled out a small spherical device. A little gift from a Zandarian arms dealer. It'll fry any electronics within fifty meters. Croc chuckled his scales rippling with anticipation. And while they're all running around like headless chickens, we slip in, grab Sirius, and get out. The moment the last bounty hunter disappeared inside, Philip pressed the button and lobbed the device towards the vehicles. It detonated with a pulse of energy, causing the vehicles to sputter and die, their lights flickering out. Shouts of confusion and alarm filled the air, as the bounty hunters and Lemnorian soldiers poured out of the warehouse, scrambling to investigate the disturbance. Now, Philip barked, sprinting towards the warehouse entrance, Grok hot on his heels. They burst through the door, their weapons drawn, and caught the few remaining guards by surprise. Blaster bolts sizzled through the air as Philip and Grok dove for cover. They returned fire, their movements fluid and precise, honed by years of combat experience. Grok's massive frame shuddered as he absorbed a glancing blow, but he kept fighting, his claws ripping through armor and flesh alike. Philip's blaster spat deadly energy, each shot finding its mark with uncanny accuracy. One by one the guards fell, until only the echoes of the firefight remained. Panting, Philip and Grok scanned the warehouse, their senses on high alert. Somewhere in this maze of crates and machinery, Sirius was being held, the key to preventing a galactic war. But as they ventured deeper into the warehouse, an uneasy feeling settled in Philip's gut. Something wasn't right. It had all been too easy. And then he heard it, the click of a blaster being primed, the cold metal pressing against the back of his head. A deep, menacing chuckle filled the air. Well, 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 what do we have here? a voice growled. A couple of would-be heroes come to save the day. Philip and Grok froze, their weapons lowering slowly. They turned to face their captor, a massive scarred alien with a face like a crushed boulder. Zog, I presume, Philip said, his voice steady despite the fear coursing through his veins. Zog grinned, his teeth filed to sharp points. In the flesh, and you must be the famous Philip Morris, I've been expecting you. Philip smirked, his eyes never leaving Zog's grotesque visage. Big mistake, Bugface. Philip's finger tightened on the trigger. But before he could fire, a shimmering wall of energy sprang up between them and the Lemnorians. Zog cackled, his laughter grating like nails on metal. A little insurance policy, in case you tried anything foolish. 
The insectoid bounty hunter loomed over Sirius, his claws twitching. Now, drop your weapons, or your precious informant dies. Grok snarled, his muscles tensing, but Philip laid a hand on his arm. Easy, big guy, we play along for now. Slowly they lowered their blasters to the ground, never taking their eyes off Zog and his Lemnorian cohorts. The energy barrier dissipated, and the soldiers moved in, roughly forcing Philip and Grok to their knees. Zog scuttled over to Sirius, his mandibles clicking with glee. You've caused me a lot of trouble, Defector, but it's all been worth it. The Lemnorians are paying a hefty sum for your sorry hide. Sirius glared up at his captor, his one free hand still gripping the stolen blaster. You're making a mistake, Zog. You have no idea what's at stake here. Zog laughed, a harsh buzzing sound. Spare me your noble speeches. I'm in this for the credits, nothing more. As the bounty hunter reached down to seize Sirius, the Lemnorian defector moved with blinding speed. He brought the blaster up and fired point-blank into Zog's face. The insectoid's head exploded in a shower of ichor and chitin, his body crumpling to the ground. Chaos erupted. Philip and Grok sprang into action, snatching up their fallen weapons and diving for cover as the Lemnorian soldiers opened fire. Blaster bolts sizzled through the air, scorching the walls and filling the room with the acrid stench of ozone. Philip rolled behind a stack of crates, his blaster spitting deadly energy at the advancing soldiers. Beside him, Grok let out a roar of fury, his massive frame shuddering as he absorbed a glancing blow. The reptilian warrior surged forward, his claws ripping through armor and flesh alike. Sirius, still chained to the wall, fired wildly with his pilfered weapon, the bolt striking sparks off the soldiers' energy shields. Philip saw the Lemnorian defector's predicament and knew they had to act fast. Grok! he shouted over the din of battle. Get Sirius, I'll cover you! The reptilian nodded, his yellow eyes blazing with battle lust. He charged across the room, his scales deflecting blaster bolts like rain off a roof. With a mighty heave, he wrenched Sirius's chains from the wall, freeing the battered Lemnorian. Philip laid down a blistering barrage of covering fire, his blaster bolts finding gaps in the soldiers' armor with uncanny precision. Lemnorians fell, their cries of pain and fury mingling with the deafening roar of weapons fire. But more soldiers kept pouring into the room, their weapons spitting death. Philip knew they were outnumbered and outgunned. They needed an exit, and fast. There, Sirius shouted, pointing to a small nondescript door half hidden behind a bank of machinery. That leads to the service tunnels. We can lose them in the maze. Philip nodded, his jaw set with grim determination. Grok, take point, I'll bring up the rear. The trio fought their way across the room, blasters flashing, fists and claws flying. The Lemnorians pressed in from all sides, their numbers seemingly endless, but Philip and his companions were fueled by desperation and a fierce, unbreakable will. They reached the door, Grok tearing it open with a grunt of effort. Beyond lay a dimly lit tunnel, its walls slick with moisture and grime. They plunged into the darkness, the sounds of pursuit echoing behind them. Philip fired blindly over his shoulder as he ran, the blaster bolts illuminating the tunnel in strobing flashes of red. His heart pounded in his ears, adrenaline surging through his veins. They had Sirius, but their mission was far from over. The fate of the galaxy still hung in the balance, and Philip Morris would be damned if he let it slip through his fingers. He gritted his teeth and pushed on, into the unknown depths of the service tunnels, his companions at his side. They had come this far. They would see it through to the end, no matter the cost. Philip surged through the chaos, his blaster spitting deadly bolts at the Lemnorian soldiers. He ducked and weaved, his combat instincts guiding him through the maelstrom of blaster fire and flying debris. A Lemnorian soldier charged at him, vibroblade humming. Philip sidestepped the slash, slamming his elbow into the soldier's face with a sickening crunch. Across the room, Grok faced off against Zog, the two giants locked in a brutal dance of death. Zog's claws raked across Grok's scales, drawing blood. Grok roared in pain and fury, his own claws finding purchase in Zog's carapace. They traded blows, each strike powerful enough to shatter bone. Philip reached Sirius, 
his blaster making short work of the Lemnorian's restraints. Sirius rubbed his chafed wrists, his eyes hard. Can you fight? Philip asked, pressing a spare blaster into Sirius's hands. Sirius gripped the weapon, his jaw set. They'll pay for what they've done. Together they plunged into the fight, their blasters roaring. Lemnorian soldiers fell before their combined onslaught, the tide of battle turning. Grok, his scales slick with blood, both his own and Zog's, finally gained the upper hand. With a roar of triumph, he wrapped his claws around Zog's neck and twisted. The sickening crunch of snapping chitin and bone filled the air. As the last Lemnorian fell, the trio stood amidst the carnage, chests heaving. We need to move, Philip urged, already heading for the exit. Reinforcements will be here any minute. They raced through the city streets, the sound of pursuit close behind. They ducked into alleys, dodged patrols, their hearts pounding in their chests. Suddenly a shadow fell over them. A Lemnorian dropship hovered above, its spotlight pinning them in place. Surrender the defector and drop your weapons. You are surrounded. A voice boomed from the ship's loudspeaker. Philip glanced at Grok and Sirius, a silent understanding passing between them. They'd come too far to give up now. Hang on, Philip shouted, grabbing Sirius and Grok. The grappling device yanked them upwards, just as a barrage of blaster fire scorched the ground where they'd stood a heartbeat before. They crashed through a window, glass shattering around them, and rolled to a stop in a dusty abandoned apartment. They needed a plan and fast. Philip kicked open the ventilation grate, the rusted metal clattering to the floor. He hoisted himself up, his muscles straining, and scanned the dingy apartment for any sign of their pursuers. Grok emerged next, his reptilian bulk barely squeezing through the narrow opening. Sirius crawled out last, his face pale and drawn. He staggered to his feet, clutching his side. It's nothing, Sirius grunted, waving him off. Listen, there's no time. You have to get this data slug to your ship. He pulled out a small cylindrical device from his pocket, its surface etched with intricate Lemnorian script. This contains everything I was going to give to the Council. Troop movements, secret weapons facilities, the location of the Lemnorian homeworld. With this, you can end the war before it begins. Philip shook his head, his jaw set. We're not leaving you behind. We'll find another way. But Sirius grabbed his arm, his grip surprisingly strong. No, the data is more important than my life. You have to go now. Philip closed his eyes, the weight of the decision bearing down on him. Finally, he nodded, taking the data slug from Sirius's outstretched hand. We'll come back for you, he promised, his voice rough with emotion. Sirius smiled, a thin, pained thing. I know you will. Now go before it's too late. Philip and Grok turned, making their way back into the ventilation shaft. They crawled through the cramped, dusty space, the sounds of Lemnorian soldiers storming the building growing louder with each passing moment. But their relief was short-lived. A Lemnorian gunship rose into view, its weapons bristling, its searchlight pinning them in place. There they are, a voice boomed from the gunship's loudspeaker. Surrender now or be destroyed. Philip's eyes darted around, searching for an escape. There, at the edge of the roof, a hovercart idled its anti-grav engines humming softly. Jump, he yelled, sprinting towards the cart, Grok hot on his heels. They leapt off the roof, their hearts in their throats, the ground rushing up to meet them. They landed hard, the cart's suspension groaning under their weight. Philip scrambled into the driver's seat, his fingers flying over the controls. The engine roared to life the cart lurching forward just as a barrage of blaster fire rained down around them. They careened through the city streets, weaving through traffic, the gunship in hot pursuit. Blaster bolts sizzled past, scorching the cart's hull, the stench of burnt metal filling the air. Grok leaned out the passenger side, his blaster spitting return fire at the gunship. But the Lemnorian craft was too well armoured, the bolts ricocheting harmlessly off its reinforced hull. Philip gritted his teeth, his knuckles white on the steering yoke. They couldn't outrun the gunship, not in this clunky hovercart. They needed a plan, and fast. 
His eyes fell on a narrow alleyway, barely wide enough for the cart to pass through. It was a desperate gamble, but it was their only chance. Hold on, he shouted, wrenching the yoke hard to the left. The hovercart hurtled towards the makeshift ramp, its anti-grav engine screaming. Philip gripped the controls, his eyes narrowed in concentration. Hold on, he shouted to Grok, who clung to the side of the cart, his claws digging into the metal. The cart hit the ramp and launched into the air, soaring over the heads of the stunned Lemnorian soldiers, guarding the spaceport entrance. For a moment, time seemed to stand still, the cart suspended in midair, the soldiers' shocked faces staring up at them. Then the cart slammed down on the other side of the gates, its suspension groaning under the impact. Philip wrenched the controls, sending the cart careening through the spaceport, narrowly avoiding parked ships and startled dock workers. Blaster fire zipped past them as the Lemnorians gave chase, their shouts of anger and surprise echoing through the spaceport. Philip weaved the cart through the chaos, his heart pounding in his chest. Ahead the Maverick came into view, its sleek lines and gleaming hull a welcome sight. But as they drew closer, Philip's heart sank. The ship was surrounded by heavily armed Lemnorian troops, their weapons trained on the approaching hovercart. And there, standing at the head of the troops, was Sirius, a triumphant smirk on his face. Brace yourself, Philip yelled, aiming the cart directly at a parked ship. He and Grok leapt from the cart just before it slammed into the ship, exploding in a ball of fire and debris. They hit the ground hard, rolling to absorb the impact. Blaster fire sizzled around them as they sprinted towards the Maverick, dodging and weaving through the chaos. Sirius stepped forward, his voice dripping with malice. Did you really think it would be that easy, he taunted. The data slug, the defection, it was all a ruse to lure you here. The Council will pay handsomely for the capture of the infamous Philip Morris. Philip's mind raced, trying to process the betrayal. He looked to Grok, who seemed just as shocked and angry. They were outnumbered and outgunned, with no chance of reaching the Maverick. Suddenly, a series of explosions rocked the spaceport. Philip and Grok ducked instinctively as fire and debris rained down around them. Zack! Grok exclaimed, recognizing their old friend's ship. He must have rallied the local resistance. Under the cover of the surprise attack, Philip and Grok made a desperate dash for the Maverick. They dodged blaster fire and fought their way through the chaos, their weapons flashing as they cut down Lemnorian soldiers left and right. At last they reached the ship. Philip slammed his hand on the airlock controls, the door hissing open. They dove inside, sealing the airlock behind them. Racing to the cockpit, Philip threw himself into the pilot's seat, his hands flying over the controls. The Maverick's engines roared to life, the ship rising from the landing pad as the battle raged around them. Blaster bolts pinged off the Maverick's shields as Philip guided the ship upwards, weaving through the chaos of the aerial battle. Grok, manning the weapons console, returned fire, his shots precise and deadly. With Zack's ragtag fleet engaging the Lemnorian forces, Philip gunned the Maverick's engines, the ship roaring to life. He yanked back on the controls, sending the Maverick into a steep climb, narrowly avoiding a barrage of blaster fire. Grok, manning the weapons console, returned fire, his shots precise and deadly. As they broke through the atmosphere, leaving the chaos of the spaceport behind, Philip's mind raced. They had the data slug, but at what cost? Sirius's betrayal stung deep, a bitter reminder of the treachery that lurked in every corner of the galaxy. Suddenly Grok's eyes widened. Boss, the data slug, we still have it. Philip felt a surge of hope. Despite everything, they could still complete their mission. He pulled the data slug from his pocket and plugged it into the ship's computer. The screen filled with a wealth of information. Lemnorian troop movements, secret bases, invasion plans. With this intel, the Council could finally take action against the Lemnorian threat. But their moment of triumph was short-lived. A proximity alert blared through the cockpit as a massive Lemnorian warship dropped out of hyperspace directly in front of them. The ship dwarfed the Maverick, its hull bristling with weapons. Katenshin human vessel, 
a cold voice crackled over the comm. This is Admiral Zavan of the Lemnorian Empire. You have stolen property of the Empire and are harboring a known traitor. Surrender now or be destroyed. Philip and Grok exchanged a grim look. They stood no chance against a ship of that size, but surrender wasn't an option, not with the fate of the galaxy at stake. Philip nodded, a plan forming. He opened a channel to the Lemnorian ship. You want the data slug? He gripped the controls tighter. Come and get it. He punched the throttle, sending the Maverick hurtling towards the nebula. The Lemnorian warship followed, its engines roaring as it gave chase. They plunged into the heart of the nebula, the swirling gases and dust immediately obscuring their senses. Philip flew by instinct, weaving through the cosmic terrain as blaster fire from the Lemnorian ship zipped past. The Maverick's smaller size and greater maneuverability proved invaluable. Philip pushed the ship to its limits, staying one step ahead of the lumbering warship. Grok, his eyes glued to the sensors, suddenly shouted, There, an unstable gas pocket dead ahead. Philip saw it, a roiling mass of explosive gas. A desperate idea took hold. He steered the Maverick straight towards it, pouring every ounce of power into the engines. The Lemnorian ship followed. Its captain determined not to lose its quarry. But as the Maverick neared the gas pocket, Philip wrenched the controls to the side, sending the ship into a sharp turn. The Lemnorian warship, its massive bulk unable to change course in time, ploughed straight into the gas. For a moment nothing happened. Then a blinding explosion tore through the nebula. Philip and Grok watched in stunned silence as the warship was ripped apart from within, the gas pocket's detonation catastrophic. In a matter of seconds, the mighty vessel was reduced to a field of debris, the nebula's gases already beginning to consume the wreckage. Philip set a course for the galactic capital, his heart heavy. They had the data slug. They had completed their mission. But the cost had been high, too high. As he made his report to the Council, their words of gratitude and assurances that countless lives would be saved rang hollow in his ears. All he could think of was the lives lost. The betrayals endured. He knew the scars of this mission would stay with him forever, a grim reminder of the harsh realities of a galaxy at war. As the Maverick set off into the stars once more, Philip and Grok prepared themselves for whatever challenges lay ahead. Their bond, forged in the crucible of battle and betrayal, was stronger than ever. They would face the future together, come what may. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.